Let's learn how to give our character some focus by blurring out the background. For this, we can use the depth of field feature inside the Blender. So as you can see, I have the small scene created where the character is doing nothing because I mainly want to demonstrate the depth of field. So in the first shot, we have the character and in the front of the camera and we have the background far away. In the second shot, we have the background objects more closer, the tree is closer to the character. And in both cases, we're going to blur out the background and we're going to work on the depth of field feature. So first thing we need to do is obviously have a camera inside the scene. I'm going to click on numpad zero to go inside camera view or I can use this as always. Now, make sure that you have your camera selected. So I can click on this outline to select the camera. And as you can see, I already have some keyframes set. So first thing you might wonder is how I have these black outlines and how I only see what's inside the camera view. That's pretty easy to do. So once you select the camera, go inside the camera properties right here and then click on viewport display. And then under viewport display, I have this, I don't know what it's called. I think it's plaster part out already up. So if you turn this down, you can see we have this. By default, it should be 0.5. But if you turn this all the way up, you're gonna have these black outlines and it's gonna be easier to see inside the scene. Now, second thing we need to do is I am in the solid view and inside the solid view, I'm gonna click on this arrow and then go down and enable depth of field. By default, you might not have it enabled. So be sure to enable depth of field. Once you enable the depth of field, again, go inside the camera properties. Uh, I'm going to turn off viewport display because we're not going to need it. And under the viewport display, you can see that we have the depth of field option. So I can check this, enable this, and you can see that nothing changes. But I can expand this menu and play around with the settings. So we're mainly going to need the f-stop and we're going to need the distance in order to control the depth of field. So if I click on f-stop and if I click my mouse and then drag this on the left side, you can see that my image becomes blurry. So point one, the lower the f-stop is, the more blurry the image is. I can also play around with the distance, turn it up, turn it down. But in order to see the distance, what the distance does, I mainly want to turn it up slightly. So maybe go to 1.7 depth of field and then play around with the distance. So the lesser the distance, the blurrier the character is. So I'm going to leave the distance at 10 because we're going to use the empty to control the distance. And let's play around with the f-stop for now. For now, I'm going to leave this at 1.5, for example. So let's learn a more versatile way to control the depth of field. So I'm going to click on Shift and right-click to bring my cursor over to the character. I'm going to click on Shift A, Empty, and then create any empty you want. I'm going to click on the sphere. And you can see we created the sphere empty. I'm going to click on S. First, I'm going to turn on the auto keyframing. I'm going to click on S to scale it down. And I'm going to place it in front of my character's face. So I'm going to go out of the camera view with the middle mouse scrolling wheel. And I'm going to place the empty in front of the character's face. Somewhere over here. Now, let's rename this inside the object properties. I'm going to name this to focus. Or you can rename this whatever you want. To stay organized. I'm going to click this and then drag this inside the camera focus collection. Or whatever collection you want. I'm going to click on numpad zero to go inside the camera view. Select the camera. Go back to the depth of field option. And then instead of manually like changing the distance, changing the values, I can click on this eyedropper tool. And then here select the object focus. If it's too hard to select the focus with the eyedropper, you can simply click this and then search for your object and then select the object. Now you can see that the background became blurry. And if I select my empty, wherever I move the empty, the focus or the blur will follow. So if I click on shift and right click and move my empty all the way to the back, so shift S selection to cursor. You can see that now my character becomes blurry and background is more in focus. So you can see we can control the blur with this and we can move this around wherever ever we want. So again, select the camera and play around with the f-stop. So let's lower this slightly, blur out the background even more. I think it's a bit too much, but let's stay at like 0.8. And now you can see the before and after. So this is the before. I'm gonna turn off the overlays and this is the after. You can see that it looks much better. The background is more blurred out. But also keep in mind that while you're working on the depth of field, the background and the blur might be a lot inside the rendered view. So I'm going to go to the rendered view. I'm in the cycles mode and I have some lights in the scene. I have the background turned up to like 21. If it's zero, you're going to have this dark scene. But be sure to turn it up just to have a quick preview. And you can see that the background, I think it's actually working nicely. Maybe turn the depth of field slightly up. Like point, I think 1.0 should be enough for this. And then I'm going to show you how you can quickly animate it. It's pretty easy. So I'm going to go inside the solid view again, enable the overlays and select the empty. And you can see that right here, I have a camera cut on frame 30. I have on frame 30 and 31, I have a camera cut. So 
what I can do is I'm going to show you an example. Let's say on the camera cat, this character stays the same in this case, but let's say on the camera cat, I move my character. So I'm going to select the character's root one. I went inside the pose mode. I to set a keyframe, go here, and then maybe move my character closer to the camera like this. I'm going to press on I to set a keyframe and I'm going to turn on the auto keyframe again so that I don't have to press I again. So I moved my character, but as you can see, my empty state in this place, it's not moving. So it's pretty easy to move. I can go back, press on I to set a keyframe, go forward. And then again, I can bring my cursor to the in front of the character's face, shift, right click, shift S, selection is cursor. Or I can basically drag it, click on G and manually move it in front of the character's face. Now, if I go inside the camera view, you can see that the background is already blurred out and my character is still in focus because we moved the empty. So first the empty stayed here and then the empty followed the character. You can see this outside the camera view, empty is here and then empty is in front of the character once again. So this is how you can quickly animate the empty. And the closer you have the camera to the character, you might want to change this f-stop. So previously we had this more wide view of the background and what I can do is hover over the f-stop so before the camera cut, before the next shot, on frame 30, I can hover over the app stop, right click, and then insert keyframe. Now, if I go forward, I can either go forward with my mouse or using the left and right arrows. I can basically change this value. So since I have set a keyframe here already and I go forward, I can maybe move it up slightly. So let's move it somewhere like 1.7 or 1.8. You can see that it automatically set a keyframe for it. So if I go back, it's 1.0. If I go forward, it's 1.8. Another thing you can do is if you want to set a keyframe, instead of right clicking and inserting a keyframe, you can hover over the text, hover over this value, and then click on I. And this is automatically going to set a keyframe. But also, if you already set a keyframe initially and you change this, then going forward inside the animation, you don't have a, you don't have to click on I and set a keyframe for it. You can basically click here and then click out of it somewhere. And this is automatically going to set a keyframe for it. And again, and again, go forward, change this, and it's going to be keyframe. So this is how we can easily animate the depth of field, manipulate the distance, manipulate the character's focus, and a lot more. So again, let's check before without the depth of field. Let's go inside the render view to see it better. This is the before, and this is the after with the depth of field. I think we're going to go inside the solid view because we're going to see a better preview. So again, before, after. And same here. This is the before and this is the after. We have slightly blurred out the background and it gives more realism and it makes the scene look more cinematic, basically. So I quickly covered the depth of field feature in my beginner tutorial series. And I didn't explain how you can basically create an empty and move it around with the empty. In my beginner tutorial series, we mainly messed around with the distance. But I did that because I didn't want to make the tutorial too complicated because it was for beginners. But here in this video, I showed you an, another easy method how you can create empty and move it around. Manipulate it, you can place it in front of the objects or characters which you want to be focused. And yeah, hopefully, you learned something new. So, that's gonna do it for this video. Smashing the like button will be always highly appreciated. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more weekly Minecraft animation tutorials like these. I upload once or twice per week. And also, if you want to learn how you can speed up your animation workflow, how to speed up the process, and basically how to animate faster, then you can check out this video. And I will see you there. Thank you for watching.